Hi, I'm Marie. Welcome to Marie's Kitchen. Today we're making a homemade all butter pie crust. Last week we made an all butter pie crust with a bourbon pecan pie and we made the crust in a food processor. I got a comment on that video. Thank you so much for your comments with a request to make the pie crust in a KitchenAid stand mixer. So that is what I'm going to demonstrate today. I'm also going to show you how to make a pie crust with your own two hands in a bowl in case you don't have a stand mixer. And then finally I'll wrap up by showing you again how to make a pie crust in the food processor. So wherever you are, whether you have equipment or not, you will be able to make a delicious homemade all butter pie crust with confidence and ease. So don't go away. You're going to want to stick around for this one. Let's get started. So the first step is just to measure out the flour in two ways you can do that. You can just scoop in like this. Just lightly scoop in and then use a butter knife to flatten it off and put it into the bowl. The other way to measure is to use a spoon and just drop it right in there. That also will give you an accurate measurement and we'll just level that off again. And this goes into our bowl. It's one and a quarter cup and we are using all purpose flour. Next we'll add one tablespoon sugar. You can use less if you're making a pie crust for a savory dish like chicken pot pie. You can use more like a teaspoon of sugar, but for a sweet pie, I generally use a tablespoon in my crust. We'll add that. Next is one eighth teaspoon salt. Now we'll pop on the paddle attachment and we're just going to give that a quick stir. Next, we need eight tablespoons or one half cup cold unsalted butter. And I keep it in the refrigerator right until I'm ready to use it because keeping the butter cold is so important to the pie making process. And I'll explain more about that as we go. So here we have our cold unsalted butter. I'll just unwrap it. I also had some cold water in the refrigerator. I've got that out as well. And we're just going to cut the butter into about tablespoon size pieces. It does not need to be exact. We're just cutting it into some pieces to make it easier to mix up. So let me kind of give you the big picture of making a homemade pie crust. The goal is to keep the butter cold because with a pie crust, you really want a flaky crust. And the way to achieve that is if you have little pieces of butter in your crust, when they melt, there's a little pocket there which fills with steam and that creates the flakes. So keeping the butter cold and in little pieces is what we're gonna keep hitting on throughout. So now let's go ahead and add our butter to the flour and then I'll give this a stir and what we're trying to do is just sort of cut the butter up into smaller pieces. So what we have here, you can see, is still very dry. The flour and butter are not mixed together. And we do have some pretty large pieces of butter. We have some smaller ones, but generally these, these are a little bit too big. We want to take them about probably half that size. Give that another mix. This looks good. It's still very dry, but you can see the butter and flour are starting to mix a little and the butter is starting to break up into smaller pieces. So we're going to stop there and add our water now. Five tablespoons of cold water to the crust. One, two, three, four, five. We'll pop this paddle attachment back on and give that another few quick mixes. So you can see here, still pretty dry underneath, but if you grab it and squeeze it together, it holds together like a pie crust. So that is how you know your pie crust is ready to go. Okay, now we'll take some saran wrap, or I actually like to use Glad Press and Seal. It's really easy to work with. You just pull out a nice big piece. Then we'll flip it over to sticky side up. 
And we're gonna take our pie crust here in the stand mixer bowl and just flap it right down onto the saran wrap. There we go. I will just pull up the sides here and I use these to form the pie crust into a disc. Just shape it with your hands. Twist it closed there and then shape this into your pie crust. Now what we need to do is pop this in the refrigerator or freezer if you're in a rush, but basically you need to chill the dough for about 20 minutes. And there's two reasons you need to chill the crust. First, you want to chill the butter again. It's melted a little bit now that we've been working with it so much in the stand mixer and then with my hands, so we need to re-harden the butter. The second reason we need to chill the pie crust is to let the, the gluten rest. Uh, you don't want very active gluten in your pie crust. If you do, it will want to pull back together when you roll it out or it'll pull back together in your pie plate and you won't have this nice crust up on the edges. It'll shrink down. So we'll put this in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. Now while that pie crust is chilling, we're gonna make the pie crust one more time. And we're gonna, this time we'll make it in a bowl with just using our hands. No KitchenAid stand mixer, no food processor. Okay, to start, we'll just as before, measure out one and a quarter cup flour. You can do the scoop or the spoon and the flatten off method. Pop that in there, one quarter cup. There we go. Now we'll add our one tablespoon sugar. Pop that in, and one eighth teaspoon salt. Now we'll just give that a quick stir. Now as before, we'll cut our butter into about eight tablespoons. And then I'm also gonna cut those in half just to make the pieces a little bit smaller so it's a little less work on my part. And we'll just drop these guys in here. Okay, we're just gonna mash the butter up with our hands here. Now we're adding five tablespoons cold water. One, two, three, four, and five. I'm gonna bring this together a little bit with a spoon here. Still quite dry looking, but again, if you grab a handful and squeeze it together, it comes together in a crust. So we know this is done. Next step is the Glad Press and Seal or Saran Wrap. Nice big piece of that. Put that down. We'll plop our crust right onto it. And then again, use the corners of this Saran Wrap to bring it together. We're gonna twist the top, form it into a disc. Now we'll put this one in the refrigerator and chill it for at least 20 minutes. Okay, the final way to make a pie crust is in the food processor, and this is my favorite way. It is so quick and easy. So again, we're gonna measure out our one and a quarter cup all-purpose flour, scoop it up, level it off. Next is one tablespoon sugar and one eighth teaspoon salt. Now we'll give this a quick mix just to mix up the ingredients. And now it's time to grab the butter from the refrigerator. If y'all have any questions, please leave the comments. I love answering and troubleshooting pie crust questions. It's one of my favorite things to do, so please feel free to leave a question. Um, if you have any. I will cut this up into our eight tablespoons approximately, drop those in with our dry ingredients, and put the lid on and give this a spin. There we go, it's about 10 pulses. Then we'll add our five tablespoons cold water, one, two, three, four, five. And give that a pulse with the water.
And that's just about done. I'm gonna reach in, being careful of the blade, and grab a handful. Feels very dry, but when I squeeze it, it comes together like a crust, so we know this is done. Pop that off. Get that guy out of the way. So now we'll roll out our press and seal. Nice big piece here. Flip it over, sticky side up. Pop out the blade. And flip our pie crust right onto the press and seal. So now we'll pull the corners up together and make it into a disc. Press it down, twist it closed, and there is our pie crust. Ready to go into the refrigerator to rest and let the butter firm back up. Okay, now that we're done making pie crust, I'm gonna show you how to roll out a pie crust. And this can be a little tricky, so we're gonna roll it out together, and as problems happen, I'll show you how to fix them. So to start, you'll need a little bowl of flour. We're gonna use that for the rolling pen and for whatever you're rolling it on, the counter, the cutting board. As far as equipment, you'll need a nine inch pie plate. I really like just a simple glass Pyrex, very affordable and very useful. So I have a few of these on hand. As far as the rolling pen, anything will work, whatever you have. I like this one with two handles on the side, but they make all different kinds of rolling pens, so you're welcome to use whatever you like. And then um, something I do really like to use is something called a pie shield. This is not necessary. You can use aluminum foil to tent your pie crust. Basically what this does is prevents burning on the edges. If you don't have one of these though, you can use aluminum foil to accomplish the same purpose. Now we'll just sprinkle out some flour here. You always want to have some flour on your countertop and we'll put some on the rolling pen there. And then we're going to unwrap our pie crust. And this one I can see is it's, it's a great pie crust because you can see it's got big pieces of butter in it and it's not super well mixed, but that can make it a little bit hard to roll. So you can see it's quite dry on this side. That happens sometimes, even with someone who makes crusts a lot like I do. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of press it together a couple times here. Just bring those dry pieces in. They got a little bit out there on the side. Bring those guys in a bit. Just kind of bring it together. Now I'm just using my hands. We're not going to knead it or uh, work it a lot. I'm just sort of pressing it together, pressing it into a little bit flatter disc. It helps, it's just kind of doing some of the rolling for me. I'm just doing it with my hands here like this. Now we'll just press our disc down on the counter. It's a little sticky on top, so I'm gonna put a little flour just to make sure. You really don't want your crust to stick to the counter. And if that happens, go ahead and ball it back up and start over. It is very hard to get a crust that's stuck on the counter off <laughs> in one piece. So um, to avoid that, we do two things. The first is have some flour on your countertop like we have here. The second thing is every time we roll it, we're gonna turn it a quarter turn, okay? and that will keep the pieces from sticking, or if it starts to stick, you'll feel it, and you can swipe a little more flour under there. So those are the two things we do to keep it from sticking. So we're gonna roll it, and then turn it a quarter turn here. Roll it, turn a quarter turn, keep rolling. The other great thing about turning a quarter turn after each roll is that it helps you keep it in this round shape. That's another problem that people have a lot, is when they're rolling it turns in this really lopsided shape or it's too long or something, but if you roll and turn, you're going to have an easier time keeping it in this round shape. So roll and turn. Sticking, it feels great. Keep rolling and turning. A little sticky, so we'll add some flour here. Just a little dusting. Turn again. The edges cracking and being uneven does not matter. Don't worry about it. I know some people get real worried when their crust starts cracking, and what I always tell them is, cracking is actually a sign of a very good crust because it shows you haven't overmixed it. So, if it cracks, as my great-grandmother used to tell me, this is gonna be one of your best crusts ever. <laughs> 
it will just keep rolling and twisting and then so how do we know when to stop what we'll do to make sure we have a big enough pie crust is take your pie plate set it on top of the dough and you want to have about two inches out on the side that'll be enough dough to go over the bottom up the side and rest on the lip and give you a nice thick edge so this looks just about right might roll it a tiny tiny bit more there we go and this is done. It is not perfect by any means. <laughs> I like to reiterate, that's not your goal in pie making or in life. We're not going for perfection here. We're going for a rich, delicious flavor. We're going for rustic and homemade. So those are your goals. Now to put it into the pie plate, there's a few different methods. Some people like to roll it up on their rolling pin. Not my preference. <laughs> I don't like to do it that way. I just take it and fold it in half. Then we'll move our pie plate here and then pull the pie crust right up on top and unfold it. That I find is the easiest way to move a pie crust. Now we have our pie crust in our pie plate. We're just going to sort of set it down into the pie plate so it's not you know, lifted up. You're just gonna kind of set it in there. You don't wanna press it in, otherwise it's gonna to wanna to pull back. So just set it in gently. And then we have our edge here. We're gonna make this into a nice decorative edge by just taking the pie crust um, and we're gonna fold it over itself onto the lip of the pie plate here. So we'll just fold the pie crust on top of itself or under itself and then rest it on the lip of the pie plate. And we're gonna go around and do that all the way around. If you happen to have a kind of a large piece of pie crust um, in, on one side and then not enough in another side, you can move it around and just you can use a little water to glue it in there uh, just to make it all even. Okay, we'll just keep tucking this under here. There's a little bit much there, so I'm gonna pop it over here. Just press it right in there, tuck this under, and this is done. Now we'll make a fluted edge or a scalloped edge. And the way I do that is just to use my knuckle and two fingers. You press your, the pie crust here between the knuckle and two fingers and that will make the fluted edge. We'll just press it between like that. If it gets sticky, you add a little flour to your finger. Round. A little flour because it's getting sticky. Okay, there is our pie crust. Ta-da! So easy. So now what you can do is uh, wrap this in saran wrap or the press and seal, wrap it real well, pop it in your freezer and you can leave it in there until you are ready to use it. So you could leave it in there until Thanksgiving. And then when you're ready to use it, you'll just pull it out of your freezer. You do not need to thaw it. If it's already in the pie plate, do not thaw the crust. Take it out, let it warm just a little bit. The only reason you wanna let it warm a little bit is because you don't want an ice cold pie going into a very hot oven. So let the pie and the plate warm up, say 15 minutes while the oven's preheating, add your filling and pop that into the oven as is. The frozen pie crust, or almost frozen pie crust is actually better. It does a better job of holding its shape in the oven because you have this very cold crust and you have the hot heat coming onto it and it'll kind of set it in its shape. So wrap this up, pop it in the freezer until you're ready to use it. Thanks so much for joining us on Marie's Kitchen. Today we made a homemade all butter pie crust three different ways. First we made it in the KitchenAid stand mixer, then with our hands in a bowl, and finally in the food processor. So hopefully after today, you'll be able to make a pie crust anytime, anywhere, from memory. <laughs> For this recipe and more, check out my website, mariesaba.com. There you can go and print out this recipe as well as all my recipes. And if you like, print them out and make your very own Marie's Kitchen cookbook for free. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. We so appreciate your likes. 
Also, leave us a comment. We would love to hear from you, and I love your requests or any problems that you're having with the pie crust. I would love to troubleshoot with you. And finally, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. I've got more videos coming out. One comes out every week with easy recipes just like this, and I don't want you to miss any of them. My goal is to give you some really easy recipes that turn out great every time so you can build some confidence in the kitchen and feel really inspired to share good food with people that you love. From my kitchen to yours, thank you.